Hello, Divine Feminines. My tripod is being a bit fussy today. I'm inspired to use the Rider Waite. I have to say, I have been uh, talking to some Divine Feminines about what's been going on in their life lately, and it's just so, it's always so nice to me, to, it always feels so nice to me to like connect with people that understand <laughs> what, you know, n normal people, other people don't understand, you know, in my life. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, that being said, like, I feel like we're really going through a lot right now. I feel like we're kind of coming into this, the dear energy where we feel our hearts are exposed and yeah, that's a good thing, right? We're taking that armor off our heart, but ha, that's so funny. Um, I just saw that word this morning. I feel like the synchronicities for me are, are coming back. Um, Beautiful energy, so mysterious. You know, our power comes from our integrating our shadow. Never easy, but always worth it. So we have give with gratitude and grace. They have, this is not our true. And in between is be playful, which has been a Youch. Um, it's been an energy coming through lately. This deck feels small. I just haven't used it in a really long time. There is this emphasis on being playful, especially if you two reconnect in some way. It's just not being too serious with the whole thing. All right. Mm hmm. Speaking of reconnection, the chariot in energy is interesting because it really has felt like that. In a lot of ways, it's felt very stuck. Oh, look at it. How sad. This is sad. I feel, oops, we have this card. I need a bigger, bigger crystal. We have the lovers on the bottom of the deck in reverse. Oh my gosh. With the two of cups. I'm going to put this one underneath. Um, oh wow. That four of cups has been coming through for me with the moon. Oh, he's, he's realizing that, you know, this is a divine connection. It's a really straightforward reading to me. Um, he's also like realizing he's been stuck because of his sadness. It's almost like a self-induced sadness, sadness in a way. It's like, you see, look at the mirroring right here. This is crazy. Look at the foot. I think I talked about that in yesterday's reading. I've been doing so many readings that I lose track and I don't remember them well at all. Um, Cause I channel. So I don't use my thinking brain. So that's how you can kind of tell, you know, there's no shade at all. Every reader is absolutely a hundred percent their own artist. Like I see tarot as an art. I see you, I, I could take these cards and like, I used to talk about this in the beginning a lot because people would be like, that doesn't mean that. But to a tarot reader, we have our own relationship with the cards and we channel the way that we channel. And some people are really just about the 3d and like, 
the thinking brain and they're going to be a lot more literal than I am. I'm more, way more, you know, esoteric and I ask for the healing messages to come through and to be a guide for people who want to move forward on their journey and, and know, you know, information that will help them do that. I'm not really about telling you, although I do say this, like I can tell you right now, he has a lot of passion for you. I think what this is saying for most of you, not all of you, is that he, <laughs> yep, wanted this to look at that queen of hearts queen of cups that's that card that armor around the heart i've been talking about and the moon again he's planning something i feel it i feel this planning hmm is it a good plan is it a bad plan what's going on here see that strategy card right in the middle I was going to say something and I got sidetracked. Sometimes if I'm quiet for a second, I'll start it on again. But if not, it wasn't meant to be said. Anyway, you know when someone's channeling because it's not like all making linear sense, really. You know, that's all really, really, that's I think the most important understanding about the twin flame journey i think he's getting that which is why it's coming back to my attention it's like this is soul energy soul energy doesn't make sense in the 3d that's not its job that's the mind's job the mind is made of fear energy and the mind and the ego have to explain everything why you know like come up with a reason to protect your your wounds your worthiness wounds right he's seen something here that's made him want to get back into the emotional things i see this foot in the water there's the hermit huh yeah he's focused on you Although you seem to be kind of running away. There's that Neptunian energy. He's like wants to put the work in. Something around the father energy and the mother energy. I can feel both sides. He's kind of waking up to his father not giving. I think this is a lot about how he sees relationships based on this energy of like, what they're giving me is like sinner and saint, right? But like, so I'm gonna say a lot of words and take them as they see fit because I'm using like archetypes more than I'm using like psychological definitions, okay? When you are dealing with someone who is like more in the narcissist paradigm versus the empath paradigm, I posted a video on this a while ago. It's like the narcissist looks very commanding and in control, right? And they do that through a process of like love bombing and withholding. It's like giving and then taking. And he's seen something about that dynamic. And I feel like for part of his life or, or the younger part or some part of his life, the feminine energy, I, it's not the mother for everyone. I think for the majority, it's the mother, but the majority just... endured quietly in a lot of ways and there's something in you I think that did that too gave and gave and gave and endured and endured and endured and put up with bad behaviors and 
through this awakening process, I think you chose <laughs> sometimes it's so funny. Uh, they're saying like chose violence. That's not what you did, but you know, it's a saying. Um, it's a Gen Z saying, right? I think the mother energy here woke up and was like no more or got like pushed out and then had to make their own way. Something like that. I know this is a stretch, but it's what I'm getting. Um, and he's been stuck in this kind of interesting dynamic for a long time because at the heart, at the core, he's a sensitive person. But in a lot of ways, he had to learn not to show that. He had to learn to control his emotions and like love bomb and withdraw and do all these like things that a 3D explanation would give you, right? And through it all, your heart has remained pure. I love this car because she has this like purple wig with the flowers and the moth in her hair, right? Very psychic, very intuitive. And we have this, the matched pair here. And I feel like you're like, in a way that you're showing this energetically, like, yeah, I know what it's like to have this broken heart. You, look at the tear coming out the bottom. But I also know I'm a healer and I can, I don't have to wear this armor on my heart. I can heal it. I can, a lot of it is very spiritual, right? Some of you may be, Whatever faith you are, it doesn't matter. Um, you find a strength in your belief systems and you find strength in yourself, right? And walking the path. See, the path in a lot of traditions is a spiral because the path always leads inward. It never leads outwards. And so long he didn't want to look inward he refused to look inward but now he's looking inward and to be honest I will keep it real part of that inwardness quote-unquote may be that he has an ulterior motive I could see that in these cards Because at the end of this day, I feel, I'm going to get a few more cards before I say all of this, but I do feel at the end of this day, hmm, well, that was an interesting one to fall out, I'll say that much. He's going through this metamorphosis, right? The dragonfly and the butterfly always go together for me with the masculine and feminine. And again, this card says, be lighthearted, finding out things, coming in to light. Sorry. Be lighthearted, finding out things coming to light, adopt, change, and heal. Adapt. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. Um... So, you know, for like a true narcissist, that those things aren't really possible. At least that's what they tell us. Do I think he's a true narcissist or, or has narcissistic personality disorder? No. I mean, the most common question when we're looking at that is like, you know, an empath reads the list of characteristics and is like, oh, that's me. <laughs> and... The thing about it is, is like with the NPD, you have to have all of the characteristics and none of like the 
you know, opposing. And so it's not you and it's probably not him for the vast majority. Um, you know, he has been watching and waiting and he has seen you glow up. Look at that. Wow, that's a crazy set of cards right there. I really feel, oh my gosh, Twin Flames. I don't know that he loves this Twin Flame paradigm or definition. I feel possibly, for some, not all, that the karmic really tried to either get in between you and block you or manipulate his vision of you. I think she probably lied. Um, in these cards, you seem to be turning your back on him in a way, or you, or you kind of cut your energy off to do your own glow up after things ended and you went inside. Or you've been focusing on what you can control. And the karmic kind of, she could have tried to tell him that they were twin flames or something along those lines. I think she really played up the soulmate angle. But here's what happened is that he looked in that mirror and he did not like what he saw, the, her, the mirror of her. Like, they're highlighting codependency. And I think that's something you've been working hard to overcome or at least deal with because we've all been socialized that way. We've like, for the vast majority of us, I'll say that in like, it's really hard to make absolutes because every twin flame journey, though similar is different. We, it's like, you can't. So I try to speak in the broadest range possible because it's all going to, it's so weird how it's so similar, but so different. And that's what's so crazy about it. Um, you, we've all been socialized to have this, you know, and it comes from ancestors too. It's like at a time in our past, if we were alone and doing our own thing that wasn't accepted by our tribe, we would have died, right? We could not have provided all of the things we needed by ourselves. And I think she tried in a lot of ways, and this could, could be an energy too, right? It could be someone toxic in his life. It doesn't have to be. For most twins, it is a wife, a girlfriend, or a mother figure. I would see that's the vast majority I see. It's usually a feminine energy or a boss sometimes. That's rarer, but I've also seen like best friends, sisters. Um, there's been many, many variations. But it can even be like a daughter at times. That's very, very rare. Okay, so... And I would say that this wouldn't apply to a child unless they were really, really in a situation where they felt like they were going to like lose their, their masculine energy in their life. So I would, I would be surprised if that was it. Anyway, I don't know why they're having me go into details because I don't normally don't, but it's important for you to understand that he sees your overcoming this a negative societal norm or more or whatever as a really attractive thing. 
And whatever she is doing, this energy, he can see the manipulation of it now. And that's because he can see it in himself. And I think it, this is, this right here is him seeing himself in this mirror, right? <clears throat> I feel like for some, not all, he kept options on like reserve, right? To get validation, never be alone, always prove that he was wanted and worthy and now I'm getting air, so I know I'm on the right track. Um, and I think he thought at one point you were doing the same thing or you were like similar to the karmic in the way that she handled things. And now there's just this real understanding that you're very different. And you, in this reading, you're standing out like... I don't know why they're saying it like head and shoulders above the crowd. Like there is a crowd around him of sorts. Like people want his attention. He's a very magnetic. I mean, the King of Cups is very, very magnetic. <clears throat> and the Emperor, you know, that's daddy and Knight of Wands also magnetic. And so he doesn't feel magnetic because I feel like down in his heart, a lot of this was just for show. And part of that show that he wanted was if he feel like somehow you rejected him or hurt him or whatever, he wanted you to feel bad about that. He wanted you to come chase him. He wanted you to come, you know, even could be like, I'm, I'm a victim and you know, only you can heal me type stuff. And I mean, these two cards are like the saddest, most desolate cards in this, in the deck. And it's like down and out emotionally and like, financially and physically like there's just like nothing to give no movement forward no and yeah he he is watching you for understanding to see what is going on with you and you're not just the freaking butterfly you're the freaking phoenix, right? You rose from ashes and transformed, changed your fears, like regrew your freaking heart that was broken. This is really, really powerful energy. And what is what did this, what did she do? She held up a mirror for him that empath and narcissist paradigm being charmed or used enable boundaries. She showed him his shadow. And that was not a fun experience, <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Um, do I see him currently doing all of the work necessary? Let's get a few more cards. Right and now, he feels to me to be in this kind of off balance energy. Both of these cards are off balance, not in balance is a better way to say it. And if he sabotaged parts of his life or his relationships, like 
I could see him doing some very, you know, out of pocket things. That's not the right use of that term, but I could see him getting really carried away and like doing some things he regrets here. And if that was the case, he has to repair some things. And I don't think you're like at the top of that list right now, okay? Um, let's see what, what he's dealing with. What is it that he's dealing with, Spirit? The thing is, is when you're down in those lower frequencies, Yeah, helpless and hopeless. When you're down in those lower frequencies, you kind of are waiting for a savior and you feel really hopeless. Um, you're hoping that someone will just, oh, see, that's beautiful energy. It's not the magician, but this card always reminds me of the magician. It's awareness and look, moving on. He's had this awareness and he's he wants to move on into something else, like into something better. Um, I guess the energy is sick of waiting. I know, except for the Knight of Wands, which is the beginning. And I think it is from the past. Emotional loss, that's that Five of Cups energy and then the One Base Chakra. I don't really see like impetuous energy here. There's emperor. Yeah, this is like the father energy. I think he's doing repairs. Oops, I have a card that doesn't belong there in it. I think he's doing repairs on his root chakra. And if you've done that, then that will make sense for you. I really feel like, God, sometimes I'm so like, messy with my cards I know they're supposed to be there if they're there but he does have a desire because this card was in there and it's making me feel like this card he is aware that not only were you this divine gift for him but that he really does want to be able to be the person that can give look at that this is one of my favorite twin cards spiritual union and this is suffering in silence it's like the feeling is kind of i don't want to make this worse i've made so many mistakes already i don't want to make this worse oh Love begins with the one card. Okay, so we have emotional loss, that five of cups, triumphing over emotional loss. So part here, like I told you, he's, he doesn't want to wait anymore. He's been, oh look, the shadow, and then that's death. He doesn't know how, four of wands. Throat chakra, solar plexus again, waiting, been waiting. <coughs> That's six of cups. <coughs> Empress. Heart. High priestess. I love this card. You know, he wants to rebuild his foundation for this union to happen. Do I think he's really thinking about it like that? No. Part of him really wants to feel better. And I think that's a really good thing. He seems to be kind of resisting his inner light, right? So to get to our inner light, we have to go through our shadow. And 
all of this stuff is making him feel really tired. Ugh. Part of that reason is, like I said to you, the people in your life not doing this work will not support or really understand this work in a lot of ways. They're just like, get over it. Why can't you just get over it? Or, you know, whatever coping mechanism is in his friend group or in his family or in, you know, that will be kind of the answer. And that's not a good enough answer for him. And they're giving me like a beautiful message about, see the water again pouring out of this golden bowl, cup. And he's really had this, or it's coming into his recognition. See the yellow and the gold? See, intuition. <laughs> This intuition is kind of taking over the chatter of his fear mind and he's having this recognition that all love really begins within. It's a beautiful energy to see in the masculine. Um, I want to say like it doesn't have so much to do with you right now, um, but it will. It's just awakening up inside, awakening inside. It's like there's something in him that knows that he can't keep living the same life with these same people to, you know, it's like earth and heaven. There's a sacrifice in here that has to be made. And it's kind of you know, self-centered in a way I feel, but it's very beneficial that we're all here to live our life, not other people's lives, right? We're here to live our destiny and our expansion of our soul. And that doesn't mean you don't care for other people, but it means you can't always put other people's priorities above your own and live your expansion. Um, I see him not only focused on the spiritual, like, I would say this isn't the same as the feminine in terms of like the feminine experience of spirituality at a much deeper level most of the time, not always, but he wants to be, there's a deep desire here to be very stable in emotions and in material like this is spiritual and material prosperity together it's like yeah he wants to make money but not at the cost of feeling good and not at the cost of living a life that he's proud of right he may have for some been involved in things he wasn't very proud of at times and I feel like that's just not as attractive to him anymore. Does that mean he's never going to do things? No, like probably he will. Like it's not usually that cut and dry with the masculine, but I would say that there's a big understanding here that look at this and that are true. That is a card of when you go up in vibrational frequency, you can see that things aren't as black and white as we're made, you know, they're showing me this, as we're led to believe, socialized or programmed, right? Those people are bad. These people are good. And he's really coming to understand a lot of that was BS. Okay, let's move on. I think I got my point across here that it, it comes also back to the whole mom and dad dynamic of one being a good parent, one being a bad parent, and that's just not really true. Um, I think he's seeing, like, the temperance in it all, like, 
a lot of, you know, his father could have done things that he truly thought were the best for him that and you know that were really hurtful that made him or hurtful to his mother and it's just that recognition of understanding like that your parents are just living out their programming too in a lot of ways unless they choose to heal and when you get to that point now I'm getting like chills in my legs like that's a foundational shift right when you understand that really the things your parents did that hurt you so badly really weren't about you as like you took them on it because they were so heavy as a child, a child that was full of love. Um, you can really have a lot of freedom through that. Like, even abuse can you can come to understand what was really not about me does this like am i excusing anything no i'm never excusing anything i'm striving to explain it from a spiritual perspective which is very very difficult to do when there's a lot of pain involved um i know because i went through it too but there is a freedom in understanding that it really wasn't about you. And see, he wants to follow his heart. And this is such a big deal. Because it means he has to reconnect to this. He has to reconnect to what he left behind the armor so long ago. You're very intimidating. I've had very vivid dreams of you, especially right now. Dreams are so highlighted and all this Pisces energy. I can't face you right now. I'm so tired of sabotaging this connection. And that's another big thing I see him understanding at a different level. Is how he's kind of just, I want to say this with tact, I don't know how to, um, You know, a lot of people in codependency, it doesn't matter who's there as long as someone's there. And I think that is what the karmic showed him. That in some, in some capacity, this karmic relationship, he thought he was special. And he's just seeing that he was just there because she had codependency and he could easily be replaced. And this isn't something he likes. Okay, I can feel you pulling away, have you moved on? I'm so scared of change. You mean the world to me. I love you. I can't get you out of my head. I need you back. So grateful for you. Well, that is a beautiful, beautiful energy. Everything I do, I do for our future. I actually feel that energy. I really do. I, I talked about it a little bit. I know when this has come up in readings before, I have scoffed a little bit because it doesn't really feel that way to us. Um, it doesn't really feel like they have some bigger picture in mind. And I do think he's mainly thinking about his future right now. And there's a lot on material abundance, but there's also the next card after that was I daydream about you. These two energies are kind of linked. This is a very Neptunian Fantasy, fairy tales, mists of imagination, seeing beyond the veil, Avalon. Also a very psychic card, right? And this is about family business, peaceful exchange, fluid abundance, valuable resource. It's about having that money flow into your experience. And there's some part of him that really wants that stable, steady flow of money and not just money, like the four of wands is a spiritual stability. 
wands are primarily spiritual. It means I feel at home wherever I am. I am my home. I don't feel like this. This is how he felt as a child. And this is how he feels, has felt in a lot of situations with his karmic, with his parents, with, you know, that energy I was talking about where he doesn't really fit in. And so he's learned to kind of chameleon and fit in, right? That shapeshifter energy. And to do that, he had to hide his emotions a lot, like we all do. And I think you've probably dealt with that some, and now he's dealing with that some. And I don't necessarily think this is like you right now, but you are this guiding light. You are an example to him of someone that is okay being yourself. And that's saying a lot in this world, right? Like, I think this has been part of the journey for you is learning to be really expressive of who you are in a more outright way, like a more confident, stable way. And learning to love yourself a lot more. And, and heal that heart and take that armor off a little bit. We're all like in that process, right? At, we're all at certain points of it. It's not a linear thing either. It's a spiral, right? We go past the wounds again. And we get more chances to heal deeper. So let's see. Engagement. It is safe for you to love. Keep an open mind. I like that. See codependency, playfulness, chemistry, reconciliation, let go of control issues, forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moment. Beautiful. Right in the middle, we have codependency. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. And this is, I think, important. Like your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. It's that difference that we all kind of experience when <clears throat> we understand it's a it's our twin. And they are perfect, but they aren't really like you expected them to be. And it stretches your mind about love, right? That's what this journey does. I do see reconciliation here. I see that he's more, he's becoming a lot more serious and letting go of some of his like younger or more immature habits. And it's not just about this chemistry, you know, the red and the blue is significant here. I think a lot of it at one point was physically based. And this card came out in the upright and it's someone from your past is returning to your life. I think it's very much based in the spiritual understanding that There was something so much deeper that that caused that chemistry, that magnetic, I think I talked about that in the beginning. Yeah, I did. Um, it's like he knows that people feel very magnetic towards him. And I think that's very easy for him most of the time. Um, but he didn't really understand why that was and you're you in the karmic i think but you mostly are the only one that really makes him feel that way and it i think it freaked him out 
but there's something here. Aries. So we're about to go into Aries season. Some Mercury just went into Aries. I wanted to call on your birthday. Violet Flame Atlantis. So those are like as spiritual as this energy gets, right? That's the pinnacle of spiritual energy. And then we have Fool's Gold. Mercury. Interesting. Venus. Mostly I, these come out more than these ones, but moon energy. You know, I started like making my own deck. I love this deck and I used it and someone told me they didn't think it was ready. And then, so I didn't finish and I just started using it and I, I kind of want to finish it now because it's different than any other deck I've ever seen. Um, and I like it. So we have sacred geometry, be resilient. This is like the fourth moon energy. Bottom of the deck is sage smudge, deeper into shadow, and they're manifesting you. I looked at your social media. No, it's I look at your social media. I look at it every day. I looked up twin flames. I think he's accepted the twin flame part for the most part for most of you. There's a recognition that there's something very different about this relationship and a recognition that let's like what's coming is that everything changed when he met you for good and for bad like there was just a big change and you know they run and they try to do other things, distract themselves, find other people, whatever, whatever it is that they do. And he couldn't, he has this thing where he just has compared everyone to you. And nobody's energy feels like you. This love energy. And like dreams of you and nobody he still has this issue around you now my body's getting really hot because he's embarrassed that you see him he does not want you to see him like I'm feeling this embarrassment especially on my back right now because it doesn't matter where he goes or where he runs or if he turns his back to you or if he's with other people, he can feel that you see him. You, your energy is like right there on him. And even if you're not thinking of, oh, this is not about you like manipulating your energy. <sighs> I feel like he still, he's coming to accept that he's a counterpart of yours, like he's your counterpart, but there's still a little tiny part of him, which means there's a part of you that doesn't quite feel good enough. And there's just this little bit of shadow left in the corner, I feel. Um, whenever we look to the other and we're like, oh, they're so, they're so this, they're so whatever. And I'm not that. That's happening. So you can see it in yourself. You've got to find a way. Let's like, let's say we look, I'm just going to use this reading. Say we look at the masculine and, and he's, you know, a lover and he gets a lot of women. This is just a scenario. And we're like looking at him. He's so magnetic. And we're like, we're not magnetic. I'm not magnetic. I feel so alone and unmagnetic. It is that this is happening to show you your magnetism. 
whatever that is that you're looking at them and saying, they're so this, it's showing you that so you can find it in yourself. That dynamic is you putting it up on a pedestal somehow. And you've got to take it down off of that pedestal and be like, I am this, and this is the way that I am this. And this is how I embody that frequency. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be anything. Um, it can even be the negative stuff. And that's where like the really advanced shadow work comes in. But I don't think we're there yet. Um, if you feel like you are, fantastic. I feel like we've been dealing with our shadows in an appropriate manner, but it is the way that you reclaim all of your power. You know, I was doing a video on this last night and I never got one that I liked. Um, so it just never happened, but I'll probably do it today again. It's like, It was about judging other people. Anytime you judge anyone else as anything, you're basically putting it up on a pedestal because you're not, you're saying, well, they're that and I'm not that. And the truth is you are that because <laughs> it's in your energy field. It's in your awareness. <coughs> I mean, the real truth is we're all things. But you can see, like, my voice doesn't even want to talk about it because it's so uncomfortable. You know, there's a really, really strong belief in our culture that if we are these bad things that we cast out, we will be cast out from society. And is such an advanced conversation okay let's move on to his messages my intentions are pure interesting so that one's been coming up in reverse for a while you feel you feel my creativity i really think you do sorry <laughs> love will keep us together every song reminds me of you i find you interesting i think that's part of that not feeling good enough that you may feel like he's not interested in you in certain, like you're boring in a way or something like that. Something you like is boring. Some way you live is boring. Um, this, I can feel that energy. And it's not, not necessarily the case. I miss being around you. I'm scared you're moving on. If I can't have you, nobody else can. <coughs> I'm not sick. It's just me clearing energy. Okay. Um, every time I make a cough, someone's like, I hope you're better. I'm like, I'm not sick. Um, if I can't have you, no one else can. I miss you. We have so much in common. Interesting. I think you are hot. I can't get over you. I'm frustrated with you. I ran away in reverse. I've been trying to distract myself from my feelings. I want to be like you. You drive me crazy. I effed up. And I'm in love with you. <coughs> now I have tears coming out of my eye. Oh. I don't know. He could come and cry to you because now I have like major tears coming out of my eyes. And this overwhelming feeling of sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um. Yeah, he really realizes he messed up. Like, he's going to realize it, or he's realizing it now. Oh, sorry, that hasn't happened in a while. All right, let's get advice. <laughs> it's a big rating, big energy in it. I know it doesn't have major arcana on the inside, but I feel like it's because that the shifts on the inside have already taken place i feel like and he wants to show some movement of sorts or some something oh so long writing sorry okay matt fairness 
The situation will be handled in a fair and just manner. I think you've gotten that twice. Diana, focused intention. We had this card too, and this says focus, focus on it too. Mm -hmm. Keep your unwavering thoughts, feelings, and actions focused on your target, and you will make your mark. And then Bridget, don't back down. So that's Divine Feminine. Oh, and we have Pele. Stand up for what you believe is right. Be honest with yourself. What is your heart's true desire? I can't show it because there's some toughness on it, but I do feel like that's what he's dealing with. I feel like his true heart's desire are being unearthed from his heart. You have Mother Mary, love and peace. Oh, yes, Mary Magdalene, teacher awakens. Oh my gosh. That has never happened. Crazy. Master Jesus in the middle and Holy Amethyst on the bottom. So, wow, powerhouse energies here. You have Mother Mary, love and peace. Let go of the need to be right. Choose peace. Mother healing is possible at this time. He has Mary Magdalene, teacher awakens. You have something important to share. Follow the inner call and don't let anything stop you. And yeah, this says teacher, but I think he is, he has something to share with you. And then in between is master Jesus with forgiveness. You're on a path of light and love and forgiveness. Father healing is possible at this time. So very much in alignment with what I was talking about with the mother and father dynamic. And then between is holy amethyst oh, look at we have venus and the holy spirit crap and then the twins move beyond current challenges focus on what you desire holy spirit expect miracles remember that only love is real and miracles occur naturally spirit has your back lady venus downloads and understanding Truth is being revealed. Deep insights are coming from heaven and the astral realm. And then we have, oh my gosh, I could keep going, but we have the twin sacred vision. Choose to forgive in order to heal. See the light in all and remember that love has no boundaries. Wow, those are really, really beautiful energies. And in all of these cards, your cards, the only one with this flower of life behind the halo here. I really feel you're like just this puzzle piece of making this all happen. Your ability to be courageous and express your truth is a big deal. And to love yourself, you have kunzite, which is my favorite of all the twin stones. Boji stones, balance, fairy stones, fertility. We had the, oh, we did not have the fairy card come out. Okay. Healing. I would, yeah, I knew that card was there. I was going to be like, if that's not that card, I'm going to look at, we have the shadow on the bottom of the deck. So we have Malachite and Rose Quartz, healing the inner child. And again, this is like this energy right here, this two of pentacles energy. Him understanding that he wants to integrate this. Look at spiritual awakening, empowerment, rites of passage, success, and ancient wisdom. These cards are crazy. Okay, let's get some dragons. And you can call these energies into your energy field. Ask that they assist you. This kunzite is such, I love the energy of kunzite. It's just a beautiful energy to me. But, you know, if you have stones you want to work with and you want, I, I feel like crystals will assist you in whatever way they can if you ask them to. I always recommend, first and foremost, people getting started with crystals or, or just wanting one crystal. I personally recommend the clear. It's the best, I think. Um, and... But go with, or the Lemurian clear, like this one has um, violet in it, but you can see the lines on the side. Those are the records that they keep. 
And I looked down and I saw the violet flame dragon. And then I saw the source dragon. Okay, let's get some dragons and the messages and we'll be done. Oh, I'm gonna go up. It's, I just saw 59, 59. Orange dragon, black dragon, dark blue galactic dragon, and air dragon. So air dragon has not come out for a while. <coughs> I feel like this is communication right here. Bring soul families and communities together, spread belonging, warmth, and oneness, bringing people everywhere together. There is something on my heart right now that if you have someone that you really felt did you wrong, you can offer your heartfelt forgiveness to spirit and you can dissolve this karma, whatever this is, um, now and it will greatly benefit you. Okay? So you just want me to bring that message through for whoever needs it. The black dragon doesn't mean you need to go tell them unless you feel like you want to. Cocoons you so that your divine potential grows. Meditate, reflect, undergo a metamorphosis. So I feel like he's in this little bubble right here. Dark blue galactic dragon helps you listen to the voice of the universe, ignites the codes of your inner of your master blueprint, access cosmic wisdom, and enter higher service. Oh, see, it came out. <laughs> I love this dragon. Okay, you may want to practice some breath work because the symbol came up for me this morning and has the butterfly. You may want to practice um, breath work and the Violet Flame, because we have also Lady Portia, who's St. Germain's twin, um, helps you rise above earthly matters, communicate honestly, brings import, inspiration and hope, see life from a higher perspective. And then we have, it's time for transmutation, magic, and healing, offer service under grace, transmutes the old around you with wisdom and grace. I feel like uh, you can integrate the lessons you've learned right now in a very magical way. And some of those lessons were ugh, tough lessons. We got it good. Nothing really prepares you for it, but acceptance is the key to inner peace. At times, we must accept things as they are. There's no point trying to change that, which is beyond your control. You may not always understand why certain things happen. However, there's always a higher purpose to the events in your life through turmoil. A blessing will soon be revealed. Time, you are giving, you're trying too hard, give it time, friendship, and then freedom, transformation, secret admirer on the bottom and surrender. I hope that helped you. If you like a reading, they're on my Etsy and, um, Best of luck with dealing with all these energies. I hope I gave you some guidance that you can use. So bye for now.